According to Kat, if you are new here, please introduce yourself in the comments below. If you're returning, just say hi. And what are we going to be making today? Okay, everyone. Today we are doing another compilation video. You asked for it, so you got it. A lot of you really like these. You like them uh, to find all of these ideas all in one place. So that's what I'm going to do for you today. These fall DIYs are using Dollar Tree, Thrift Store, and other really affordable products. So if you want to learn how to make all, I believe 12, 12 of these, make sure you stay tuned. If you'd like to know what supplies I've used, check out the description box below. And with all that being said, let's get right into it. DIY number one, pumpkin patch wood sign. So the first thing I did was I took my very favorite sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree and this 25 cent piece of wood that I got from Habitat for Humanity Restore. I love that store because I can find really cheap wood to use for my signs. I'm taking the Waverly chalk paint that I get from Walmart in white and I give it a good coat. Now I'm taking this truffle paint by Waverly. It's like a dark brown and I am going over those poster letters from Dollar Tree. That is just to take some of the shine off. Now, whatever I had in my brush, this is a dry brush. I am going right over that white that I already painted on just to give it some distressed look. Okay, so now I'm taking those poster letters now that they've dried and I am putting them on my square. Now this square, looks like a ruler, right? And I got it from the Dollar Tree and I use it all the time. I love to use it to keep my letters straight and um, yeah, I get a little OCD about it. So this really allows me to make my signs look really good. So I basically just line it up right onto that board and I press on the letters and then I ease out the bottom of it and then I just press the rest down. And this allows me to keep them straight and spaced appropriately, so I love it. So right here I am using the um, exclamation points as my end pieces. This ribbon is from Hobby Lobby. You can use any ribbon you have. I really like this ribbon. It's very thick and pliable and yeah, it's a good ribbon. So I just take a piece of jute twine, wrap it around the middle, make a knot. Now I'm going to tie this around the middle as well. And then I realized after I did this, I'm just kind of folding it over on each other. After I did this, I wanted some tails on that bow. So I went in the back and I made them second. So you can see I cut them in half because that is really thick for the tails. Made a little, what is those? What are those called? Dove, no, dovetails? I think I have a video where I've asked the same question. <laughs> so we won't get back into that dog ears, dovetails, some animal. Yeah. And then I just take this lamb's ear from Walmart. I love this stuff so much. It's my favorite. And I was having trouble cutting it. So I used my dog nail clippers that I got from Dollar Tree. And those are great for dowels, anything like that to cut anything like rounded and hard. It's perfect. And I am just hot gluing those in place. And now I'm gonna take that hot glue, put it on the back of this bow, and put that bow right on top of the two sections of lamb's ear that I have on the top of the sign. I'm gonna take this Mod Podge, put it right on top of that, those poster letters to make sure they stay put. Now I'm going to add these hangers to the back of the wood. You can use whatever you have, but I love to use soda tabs. Really easy, I hot glue those in place. And that is done. I hope you like this as much as I do. And now we're moving on to DIY number two, fall scroll sign. This is another pumpkin patch sign giving you another option. 
And yeah, so I am just measuring out this butcher paper roll that I got from Dollar Tree. And that piece of wood that you see there is from, you know, like when you hang your clothes out on those clothes hanger things and they're like wooden. Well, mine was falling apart. And of course I keep everything. So I kept that. So I'm just putting some Waverly chalk paint in truffle. I'm trying to stay on the ends, but you know me, I kind of did the whole thing and I'm just giving it a darker look. So I'm taking that butcher paper. I rolled it open a little bit and now I'm freehanding pumpkin. Now I'm just using a regular Sharpie right here. I make it thick on the way down, thin on the way up. That's the best way for me to tell you how I do this. So I'm just kind of writing it first and then you can see any downstroke, I'm making it thicker. Anytime you'd make a downstroke on your letter, that's where you make it thick. And I think it gives it a really cool effect. And yeah, this was super easy and it's not perfect, but I just think it looks really cute. The next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to make the patch. I wanted those letters to be very straight since the other ones have that scroll uh, cursive look to them. So I'm just using this ruler just to keep everything straight as possible and Again, just doing whatever looked good to my eye. I'm putting some lines in here with some pencils so I keep everything straight and uniform. Then I write open daily, put two dots on the side, and I'm using my ruler to make an arrow. This is nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, and I'm getting that ready. But you can see here, I... <laughs> I am putting that in the top. I hot glued it a little bit just to make sure it stayed put. This ruler is from the Dollar Tree. I put it at the bottom just so it gave it some weight. At first I tried to use a different type of glue. It just made the paper wet, so be very careful. And I only put a little bit of glue. You couldn't see it because the way I folded it over, I kind of salvaged it. So just be really careful if you're going to glue something on to the bottom. This already had holes in it, so I lucked out. If you do not have holes in it, th then I would just tie it around the actual piece of wood. And then I will tie the ends in a knot so everything stays in place. I will kind of measure out the rope as long as I want it. And then I will take my lighter and just kind of burn any excess fuzz from that rope off. So I just want to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I, I really honestly can't even believe this, but I got to 40,000 subscribers. And I honestly cannot even say I could have done this without you, obviously, because who would be watching me then? But I cannot even tell you how much love and support you all give me and how much I appreciate it. And if you were with me for a while, you know I read every single comment. I try to respond to every single comment. And I just appreciate each and every one of you. All the kind words you say to me touch me more than you could ever imagine and just bring such warmth to my heart. And I know it sounds so cheesy, but I really do mean that. And some of you make me cry because you're just such good people. And I feel very blessed to have all of you in my life and that I am able to have this platform to meet new friends. So yeah. So all of this is just for me to say thank you. And I love each and every one of you. And thank you for those of you who reached out to me. I'm sorry I haven't been around for a little bit, but I have been getting ready to go back to school. And yeah, you know how that is. I've been a little crazy because of just trying to prepare, but I'm ready to get back into this. So please bear with me until I can get situated. And now that I'm done pouring out my love for all of you, let's move back into the craft. All right, so I took this Ivy Garland from Dollar Tree and I really like it because there is like a wire on the inside and it's really easy to maneuver and tuck and twirl around all of that. I didn't need to use any glue. I thought it needed a little something, but I also liked it plain, so either way. And I just think it looks really cute. And then I decided I wanted something on the bottom. So I took these Dollar Tree ferns. I cut them just to make them a little smaller. And I glued, hot glued, three on both sides of the bottom. And then I took some Dollar Tree apple blossom flowers. Were they apple blossoms? No, cherry blossoms. 
yeah, I knew it was like a fruit, <laughs> cherry blossom flowers. And I am just hot gluing those in place. And this is finished, so here it is. I hope you like it as much as I do. Moving on to DIY number three, rustic wood stool. So I got this little wooden stool from Habitat for Humanity Restore for $4. It is so cute, perfect for decorating. I cleaned it really well and then I took my Waverly Antique Wax to darken up the legs of the stool. They were a bit um, reddish for my liking and I thought this would add just a little more brown and you can see it did just that. So I just took a paper towel and put some antique wax on there and it just did exactly what I wanted it to do. Then I took my sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree just to um, smooth out the wood and this Waverly chalk paint in white. Now you can see that paint that was on there was very yellowed, like yellowing. So I wanted to freshen it up a bit with the white. And then I took my ruler just to kind of help me with the center and these Waverly stick sticky stencils that I love so much I got those at Walmart and they are just really great because I don't think they bleed that much just because they're sticky and they're really nice to work with and you can see I just used some Waverly chalk paint in truffle which is a dark brown and then I just mixed and matched the patterns of those stencils from that pack use that same truffle paint and I think it looks really cute and added then a nice fall effect so I could pair this with the wooden pumpkins that are to come and the pine cones I just think all of these warm colors together look really great and this is pretty much finished I will show you the end product after I move on and show you the next couple that go in this vignette. So DIY number four, wooden block pumpkins. I got this set of carving blocks, they're basswood from Hobby Lobby and they were a really good deal because you got a whole bunch of them, uh, 20 or so for $9.99, but then you get the percentage off. So I know that Dollar Tree does carry these now, but at the time when I made this video, they did not. So I am using my Waverly chalk paint in mineral, my Waverly chalk paint in truffle, and white. And I am painting each of those a different color, and I gave it a good coat waited for them to dry and then any places that were a little thin I went back and just added an extra coat so I used white truffle and mineral I love the color mineral of Waverly chalk paint then I just took these sticks that I had outside and broke them apart and hot glued them right on the top and they are still standing and this is a whole year later so even though it was just a little bit of hot glue it worked great I used the lamb's ear little leaves for the tops of these pumpkins and these are just so cute they're so easy but yet so rustic and simple and i love it so someone asked me recently why do you burn the twine or the rope i just don't love when all of that like fuzz is hanging off and it bothers me so it might not bother you so by all means don't do it and if you feel nervous about it don't do it but i'm okay with it I just wrap it around a few times. It kind of secured it in place just a little bit more and then I tied it into a knot and it gave it such a cute minimalistic look and I just love these pumpkins. And again, I'll show you that when I am done with this vignette. DIY number five, pine coat crate. So I took this Hobby Lobby set of balsa wood. It's called box of wood. Again, a really good deal. And these strip bag of wood, again from Hobby Lobby. I just went in their wood section and just tried to find what I could. Sometimes it's a better deal than Dollar Tree if you use a lot of wood. And I use a lot of wood, so it is a better deal for me. And again, you can find it on Amazon or whatever. So I took those basswood pieces, and again, you can find something like this at Dollar Tree, and I'm, this is just to give you some ideas and some inspiration. So I'm just using hot glue kind of to push those together it worked out just fine and again that's still standing as well I'm just cutting the ends to size and 
like I am not making this perfect in any way, but you can see I just took those pieces of um, wood or you can use the Dollar Tree tumbling blocks that will work as well. And it just gives it a little more surface area to glue on. I love using my square for this. It just keeps everything, well, squared. It keeps everything at a 90 degree angle and just perfect to make a box. Again, just adding on some more surface area to glue to. So I'm just putting that on and that helps me to glue the corners together. You could see I did the sides first before I attached it to the bottom. That way, um, I'm just gonna glue the little sections right at the bottom. Look, see how I just did those four corners? And that way I didn't have glue slopping out all over and it kept it nice and clean. The glue you see there will be at the bottom. You will not see that as well. And I just touched up any places where I thought could use a little extra glue and used a skewer and kind of pushed that glue in there. And you can see how great this looks. And this is nice and sturdy. Oh, I'm knocking on it. I'm showing you how sturdy it really is. Now, you know I save everything, so I'm using the back of a picture frame to make the pine cone sign. So I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in white and I'm giving this a good coat. Then I will just measure out how long I want it. I don't know why I'm showing you this because I do cut it then. Um, and then I'm going to use my little trick to put on the word pine cones with my Dollar Tree stickers. And then I'm going to carefully press it onto that piece of cardboard, but I lose an eye, not my real eye, <laughs> the eye from pine cones, but I salvage it and put it back on and it's all good. I realize I think it's a little long at this point, even though it looked cute like that. And I do cut it in the end, but I am taking some truffle that is left over on my paintbrush and I'm just kind of distressing that sign. You can see I lost some footage here. Oh, Mod Podge it too, just because those sticker letters aren't sticky. They really aren't, they'll come right off. But you can see I lost some footage here where I took my Waverly chalk paint and truffle and I kind of watered it down a little bit and put made it like a stain on the side of the box. I'm not sure if I liked this without the stain or with the stain, but either way, I think it, they both look cute. So it's up to you. So now I'm just taking some twine from the Dollar Tree and I am just wrapping it around to give it that rugged, rustic, minimalistic look to kind of match the whole theme here. Took some pine cones, threw those in. I hope you like this setup as much as I do. And you can see all three of these in the vignette together. DIY number six, burlap wrapped jars. I got all of this burlap in the next few DIYs from burlapfabric.com and they sent me a bunch of stuff to try out and I was really appreciative. So I took my Waverly chalk paint in moss and agave. Love those two colors. And two jars from the Dollar Tree along with these little wooden um, knobs from, I believe those were from Joann's. No, they might've been from Hobby Lobby. Again, super cheap, four in a pack for like a dollar fifty something like that and I am taking the moss and the agave and just painting both the lid and the the knobs and I liked those two colors because I thought they kind of went with these two pieces of burlap that I picked so what I did is I cut a straight line and then all those pieces on the end, I just kind of pulled off like a couple strings and it made it look really 
like what's the word ragged on the ends it looks so cute i love it and then i just take a little hot glue to hold it in place until the mod podge dries now little tip if you ha get too much mod podge on your jar and you can kind of see it build up it's really hard to get off so what i did was i took a baby wipe and i just laid it on top until you get the mod podge wet again and then i just kind of like scraped it off with my nail it came off super easy and now i'm just taking some watered down waverly chalk paint and truffle and i'm just distressing the lids and the knobs you can see on that moss one how that looked now i'm taking this ribbon also came from burlapfabric.com and those edges were already frayed so they'll match the frayed edges from the blue and green that I created how I pulled those strings out so I thought that looked really nice together and I just wrapped that around the middle so now I have two wrapped around and then I take a piece of string like kitchen string from Dollar Tree and I make a little bow with that and I just think these look so cute and then I take some E6000 and some hot glue just to make sure these knobs stay in place. Then I will take some pine cones and some tiny little pumpkins to add inside in the jars. But I will show you how this looks in the end when the whole vignette is finished. So let's move on to DIY number eight, Hello Fall Burlap Pillow. So cute. And you can see I'm taking this piece of burlap and making it into a rectangle kind of sectioning it off and how I'm going to cut it so that I have two pieces the same size and you can see right here they're about the same size it does not need to be perfect because I will show you that we're going to invert it and it will be just fine so I'm taking this stencil that I got I do believe I got that at Walmart a long time ago but you can use anything you have and I'm just spelling out hello fall just stippling it on super easy and then I take this Dollar Tree stencil wheel just to put on a little scroll I put a piece of glass on <laughs> the two pieces together I invert so I have the good sides facing each other and I'm using that glass as a way to keep this in a really nice rectangle I really don't think this was a good idea so there are times that we don't have good ideas too and believe me that was a really bad idea because I could have broke that glass and cut myself when I tried to pull it out bad idea don't do that don't do what I just did so I leave a little opening so I can invert this little tiny pillow this was so easy but this is so cute then I take a skewer just to push out those corners and I'm folding in the bottom taking some polyfill and you can see I'm just stuffing it in to a really good like um, fluffiness that I liked. That's so cute. And you can see as I fold in the bottom, I'm just going to hot glue that in place. Be careful because it is hot and there's little holes. This is done. But I will show you the finished product when this whole vignette is done. Look how cute that is. All right, DIY number nine, autumn burlap banner. So I had these, you know I'm a teacher, so I had these forever and I thought I would use these up. So I am taking these poster letters and I do believe you can get these at Dollar Tree now and I am painting them with Waverly Chalk Paint in Truffle and then I'm going on top with Waverly Chalk Paint in White to get add some distressing and I wanted to make sure that all would stay in place so I put some Mod Podge on top and it just made it a little thicker and tougher and all those good things. And then I thought it would be really cute to fancy up this banner sign with some acorns because I do love to decorate with acorns. So I'm taking some of that burlap, cutting it into the bottom of an acorn shape. I'm taking that um, ribbon that I also got from burlapfabric.com and I am cutting it into the top of what an acorn would look like. Then I'm just taking off some pieces of a pine cone and I'm using those as the little stems. So these turn out so ridiculously cute. You could just make these just to make these and make a little banner of just those because they're so cute. And I just hot glue that all together and look how cute, little acorns. I love it and it's really rustic looking and earthy and fall looking, love it. So I just made a few of those. 
and I will put them right on the banner. So I'm taking this six piece banner set from burlapfabric.com and it is perfect because autumn has six letters and I will put a letter in the center of each of those pieces with some hot glue. So which worked out so perfectly and easily. And this is where I kind of messed up a little bit. So I wanted to stagger between each of those pieces of banner a fabric ribbon and tied into a knot and those little acorns I just made. But once I added it all in and I saw how those kind of like those middle pieces were just hanging, it was not looking good and then it made the acorn hang weird. So then I went back after I glued them all on, I'm just showing you where I made my mistake and how I fixed it. The banner pieces were too far apart and I wanted them closer together and plus I just thought it was hanging weird so I'm gonna fix the whole thing. So I kind of ripped the whole thing apart and then I retie it and I'm going to glue those little acorns and those ribbons back on. I'm gonna tie those back on and you will see it will look so much better and I'm so glad I fixed it. So yeah, we all make mistakes and we just have to find a solution to those mistakes. Then I have this these pieces of um, berries that I had around and they had really cool leaves on those. So I am taking those off and just gluing them on to each of the banner pieces and it just gave it more of an earthy feel and I loved the way that looked. And now I am just adding a piece of little fabric right on the back of those acorns just to hold that string in place and so I know that it wouldn't come apart. So. I just added that as a little extra security. And now I'm just tying on those fabric ribbon pieces, cutting off any excess, and this is pretty much done. So let's take a look at the whole vignette. I hope you like this as much as I do. DIY number 10, tin cans on a wood plank. This whole vignette is trash to treasure. So I am taking this piece of trashy, <laughs> trashy plank of wood. I don't know, it just was not the best piece of wood. So I am taking some Waverly chalk paint and truffle, which is a dark brown, adding some water to it just to thin it out and putting that a nice thin coat on there. Now I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in mineral and I'm just putting it right on top to age that wood and almost make it look like barn wood and it really made a really cool effect. I wrap my brushes between um, painting so that they don't dry out and I can go back to them. I am using three tin cans, which are like the bigger, fatter tin cans that you would get um, crushed tomatoes in. And then I'm taking a piece of burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree, wrapping them around each of those tin cans. And then I am taking this ticking ribbon from Hobby Lobby, but I know they do sell it at Dollar Tree now, wrapping that around the center of each of those cans. I love to add, I love to layer on ribbons and twines and all that. I think it just adds a really cool effect. I am now burning off any fuzz on that twine, wrapping it around the center of those cans right on top of that ticking ribbon. And then I will tie a little, I do believe I tie a knot. Yes, I am a knot person more than a bow person. So I tie a little knot and I do that to each of those cans. If you are liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I would love if you did. And I would hope you would stick around for many more DIYs to come. Okay, so then I thought I wanted that wood to look even more distressed. So I went back on top with a little more mineral paint just to make it look a little rougher. And now I'm going to adhere these cans right to that wood. 
use a little hot glue or you can use E6000 or whatever you have, any your favorite type of glue. Now I'm just taking some Dollar Tree floral foam, putting in each of those cans. I got these Heather stems, I do believe from Walmart. So pretty, love the colors. I just blended that mauve color, that dusty rose, and that cream together in each of those cans using some Dollar Tree Spanish moss just to cover up that floral foam. So cute, love this. You'll see this at the end, so let's move on to the next piece in our vignette. DIY number 11, cotton stems in a jug. So I took this orange juice container, it's a plastic orange juice container, and I'm using some Waverly chalk paint in white, giving it a good coat. Then I'm taking this egg carton and I'm just breaking it apart all on the bottom and I'm cutting out little like triangles out of each of those bottom carton pieces. You can kind of see it kind of looks like a star or a flower and I just kind of mold them into place. You can see what I'm doing right here. Then I take my hole punch and I'm going to put a hole in the bottom of each of those flower stars shapes whatever you want to call it that is where I'm going to put my stick through so I did it before I painted it I realized after I painted the first one that would probably be better since it's going to get really messy so I first started with my Waverly chalk paint and truffle then I went and did a dry brushing of Waverly Chalk Paint in black. Just a dry brushing just to give it some more dimension. Waverly Chalk Paint in hazelnut, a little more dimension. Again, I'm just laying up some of those pieces. So I am using my scraps that I had before. These are the backs of the picture frames and actually the stand part. I'm cutting them into the shape of a tag. I have two of pieces. I'm going to paint them truffle and Waverly chalk paint, putting holes in them, and you will see that I will make those as the tags that go around the um, orange juice container. So I am taking some Waverly chalk paint in mineral, and I'm kind of giving it a dry brushing just to make it a little more distressed looking. I'm going back to using those Waverly sticky stencils that I got from Walmart, and I'm using my mineral chalk paint in from Waverly, and just stippling that on. I do it on the front and the back, but you could only do one side if that's what you would like to do. And then I pull this off. I didn't wait long enough, so some of that white paint came with it and I had to go back with my brush just to add some more white. It was super easy to fix. Now I'm using those same stencils to write fall y'all and one will say fall and the other one will say y'all and I just am stippling on those letters right on those makeshift little um, tags and it looks so cute. And I realized I didn't have like a little apostrophe, so I used, I don't, I think part of the O, just the top of the O right there, that corner, and that made my little apostrophe. And these do not look super clean, but I didn't want them to. I wanted it to look really rustic. I'm showing you how I'm burning off that fuzz. I put the twine right through those holes and I wrap it around the top of the jug and that is ready to go for these really cute cotton stems. Now I'm just taking some sticks I found outside and I am putting them right up into that hole that I punched out using a little hot glue to make sure that stick stayed in place. When those dried, I went back with some cotton balls. You can get those right at the Dollar Tree and I'll take like one or two pieces. I kind of pulled it apart a little bit um, and stuck those in right there in those cotton stems. The reason I made my own is because I love the cotton stems and I can never seem to find them. And then when I did find them somewhere, they were so much money and I didn't want to spend that much. So I thought I'd make my own. And that's what they all look like together. And here you can see the little jug and how I'm going to wrap around those little tags. And I'm going to add this all to the whole trash to treasure vignette and this is truly trash to treasure these are all things I would have normally thrown away the orange juice jug the egg carton container the tin cans that beat up board so all of these things I would normally just toss and now I'm using them to decorate my home such an affordable way to craft last one DIY number 12 
pumpkin and gourd plaque. I take, again, the back of a picture frame and some Waverly chalk paint in mineral, and I am not giving that a good coat. I'm just kind of like splotching on some whatever's on my paintbrush, and then I add a little bit of the truffle that's on my paintbrush, and I kind of just run over it and distress the whole thing. I take some twine, and I am just wrapping it around the one side, and then I will hot glue that in place. I tie a little bow with a piece of twine and then I hot glue that right on top. And then I have these sticker letters that are kind of puffy. And I do believe I got those at Walmart. I didn't have an N, so I used an H and then cut off the top of it. I'm using my little trick. You can see I am pressing those down and this is the same stickers, but they had like capitals and lower cases and I just made it all work. I spelled out pumpkins and then I spelled out and gourds. And now this is one of those stencil wheels from the Dollar Tree and it had like a little arrow on there. So I just put that right at the bottom and you can see I'm using another backing of a picture frame and I'm using it to cut out a gourd and a pumpkin. I just freehanded those. I didn't make them super special. I just cut them. I didn't even, I don't even think I drew it first. I just cut it. And then I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in moss and giving both of those a really light coat, super easy, wasn't making it opaque or anything. Then I went back with my Waverly chalk paint in white just to put some striations on it to give the pumpkin and gourd some dimension so they didn't look so flat. And you can see I'm kind of going around. You can kind of see what I'm doing there. And again, I'm using a those pine cone needles to make the little stems for the pumpkin and the gourd. And that's a great way because they look really rustic like that and you're just using things you have in your house. I just hot glue that in place and I just love the little homemade look of this sign. Then I had to fix the back. I put an old piece of wood on the back that just wasn't standing up and that was easy enough. Fix this and here's the whole vignette. I hope you like it as much as I do. And here we are at the final reveal, my favorite part of the video, because we get to recap everything we just made. So we first started out with some pumpkin patch signs. I love these signs so much, and I love to decorate with them. So cute. Next, we moved on to the thrift store find, the stool, and then we added in the little pine cone crate and those really cute block pumpkins. Then we have some burlap fabric, little decor pieces, and the banner, so cute, I love that little pillow. Then we have our trash to treasure pieces. I love all of those as well. Tell me in the comments below, which one is your favorite? I'm gonna go with my pumpkin patch sign. I love that one. You tell me below which one of these is yours. Thanks guys. So that's it, that's the end of my video. I hope you liked everything you saw here today and I hope it inspires you to make something of your own. If you have not checked me out at Instagram over at Cat Luna Designs, please do so. Please show me some of the things you have been making. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye. So that's it, that's the end of my video. I hope you liked everything you saw here today and I hope it inspires you to make something of your own. If you have not checked